You've probably seen headlines claiming Nevada is pumping Pacific Ocean water 170 miles into the desert through a massive $16 billion pipeline. What's actually happening turns out to be more complicated than those viral claims suggest, and the truth reveals something bigger about America's most serious water crisis in modern history. The American Southwest faces a genuine emergency, and that part of the story holds up. But the mega pipeline narrative circulating online mashes together conceptual proposals, speculative news coverage, and Nevada's real long-term water strategy into something that doesn't exist the way people describe it. We're going to untangle what's verified from what's speculation, examine Nevada's actual plans, and explore why these massive infrastructure ideas capture our imagination even when they remain firmly theoretical. Lake Mead sits at the center of this story, and that's where the facts get serious. America's largest reservoir by volume takes shape behind the Hoover Dam on the Colorado River, supplying water to roughly 25 million people across Nevada, Arizona, California, and Mexico. Lake Mead holds just 33% of its total capacity as of December 2025, sitting at approximately 1,059 feet elevation. Full capacity reaches 1,229 feet, which puts the current shortage into perspective. July 28, 2022 marked the record low at 1,040 feet and 58 inches, a level the reservoir hadn't seen since it was first being filled in the 1930s. The white mineral deposits left behind on the canyon walls stretch for miles now, and locals call this the bathtub rain. 160 feet of water has disappeared since the year 2000, leaving that pale testament visible to anyone who visits. Nevada's position gets particularly difficult when you look at the allocation numbers. 300,000 acre-feet annually represents just 1.8% of the lower basin's total, making Nevada's share the smallest of any state drawing from the Colorado River. Current shortage conditions drop that figure to approximately 279,000 acre-feet, and the underlying math creates an impossible situation. Experts call it a structural deficit of three to three and a half million acre feet every single year. The Colorado River actually flows at around 13 million acre feet, but the 1922 Colorado River Compact allocated 16 and a half million acre feet. Over a century of promises exceed what the river can deliver, and climate projections suggest an additional three million acre feet will vanish over the next decade. Everyone searching for solutions has started considering ideas that once seemed like science fiction. The Little Pacific Project generating so much online attention traces back to opinion pieces and conceptual proposals rather than government initiatives with actual funding. R.B. Provencher, a former Department of Energy manager, wrote a September 2020 guest column in the Idaho Post-Register, describing it as one option being proposed. His concept outlined a 170-mile pipeline from California's Pacific coast that would create a 75-mile artificial basin in Nevada, with additional pipelines extending to Lake Mead. That $16 billion figure appearing everywhere seems to originate from a Brazilian energy news aggregator called Click Petróleo e Gas. And here's the thing. No Nevada government source has verified it. The Southern Nevada Water Authority hasn't confirmed it. Major American news outlets haven't substantiated it. No official feasibility study exists, no engineering analysis has been completed, and no environmental impact assessment sits in any government filing cabinet. The difference between someone proposing an idea in a newspaper column and a government actually building something matters enormously. The Little Pacific Project belongs firmly in the first category. Ocean desalination hasn't been entirely dismissed in Nevada's long-term planning, which keeps this conversation alive. Bronson Mack, spokesman for the Southern Nevada Water Authority, acknowledged that desalination might become part of Southern Nevada's water portfolio at some point in the future. But here's where the story takes a different turn, because the authority's actual strategy looks nothing like the pipeline narrative spreading across the internet. The Southern Nevada Water Authority provides wholesale water to more than 2.2 million residents, and their approach relies on three pillars that have nothing to do with massive ocean pipelines conservation, water exchanges, and targeted infrastructure investments. Conservation results have exceeded what anyone predicted possible. 55% reduction in per capita water use between 2002 and 2024. 
all while 829,000 new residents moved to the region. Las Vegas transformed into one of America's most water-efficient major cities through strict outdoor watering regulations, mandatory water-efficient fixtures in new construction, and aggressive programs replacing grass lawns with desert landscaping. The usage numbers tell the real story. Nevada is entitled to draw around 279,000 acre-feet under current shortage conditions, but the Southern Nevada Water Authority used just 212,400 acre-feet in 2024. Conservation bought them time and flexibility that experts once thought impossible. Water exchanges formed the foundation of their future supply strategy. Rather than building pipelines to haul ocean water hundreds of miles inland, they're exploring partnerships where Nevada co-finances coastal desalination facilities in California or Mexico, then receives equivalent Colorado River water rights from Lake Mead. The water never actually travels from the ocean to Nevada. Nevada invests in coastal production and receives credit for Colorado River water that would have gone to other states. $750 million has already been committed toward California's Pure Water Recycled Water Project in exchange for a share of California's Colorado River allocation. Real money flowing toward real projects, but fundamentally different from constructing a 170-mile pipeline across mountain ranges and desert. John Ensminger, general manager of the Southern Nevada Water Authority, projected in 2018 that any desalination involvement would come 30 to 40 years down the road. Getting his crystal ball out, as he put it, Southern Nevada probably will have an equity interest in a desalination facility, either on the coast of California or, more probably, on the Pacific coast of Mexico. The 2017 Minute 323 Agreement between the United States and Mexico established the framework allowing American entities to invest in Mexican water projects in exchange for Colorado River credits. Understanding why Nevada isn't simply building a pipeline to the Pacific requires grasping the scale of what such a project would demand. These aren't minor technical hurdles that clever engineering can solve, but fundamental barriers making such projects extraordinarily difficult and expensive. Elevation presents the most significant challenge. Water from the Pacific would need to climb 8,000 to 10,000 feet or more to cross the Sierra Nevada mountain range far exceeding any existing water infrastructure in the world. The California State Water Project's Edmonston Pumping Plant currently holds the record as the world's highest single lift at 1,926 feet, 787 megawatts of power, and 14 pumps totaling 1.12 million horsepower accomplish just that one segment of lift. Scaling up to reach Nevada's elevation requirements would demand energy consumption unlike anything ever attempted. Comparable projects around the world provide some basis for estimates, including Chile's Escondida Mine, which pumps seawater 170 kilometers to 3,200 meters elevation for $3.43 billion. A Nevada pipeline moving meaningful volumes of 200,000 or more acre-feet per year would require an estimated 800 to 1,500 megawatts of continuous operation, translating to 7 to 13 billion kilowatt-hours annually. And then there's the brine problem that nobody seems to discuss. Reverse osmosis desalination, the most efficient technology available, produces one gallon of concentrated brine for every gallon of fresh water created. Coastal desalination plants return this brine to the ocean where it disperses and dilutes. What do you do with brine in the middle of the Nevada desert? Evaporation ponds and deep well injection cannot scale to the volumes a major water supply project would require and both options risk groundwater contamination. Solving one environmental problem by creating another doesn't qualify as a solution. Nevada isn't alone in considering ocean pipelines. Utah actually took the idea much further, and what happened next should inform anyone evaluating similar proposals. Utah's Legislative Water Development Commission proposed a 550 to 750 mile pipeline from the Pacific Ocean to the Great Salt Lake in May 2022. The lake had been shrinking dramatically due to water diversions for agriculture and development, and Representative Joel Ferry stated they were dead serious about the proposal. Desperate times call for desperate measures, he said, with all options on the table. Utah commissioned an actual study from Brigham Young University, and the November 2023 report effectively killed the concept. Construction costs would exceed $100 billion, 
annual operating costs, would run over $300 million. Electricity requirements alone would equal 11% of Utah's entire electricity demand. Lead researcher Rob Sauby hoped the study could put the Pacific Pipeline idea to rest, noting that figures could easily triple with a longer pipeline route, mountainous terrain, higher flows, multiple pipelines, or less efficient pumps. Utah's Great Salt Lake Commissioner Brian Steed confirmed afterward that a Pacific Ocean pipeline is not among the many options Utah is weighing because it likely wouldn't have enough support to go anywhere. The Great Salt Lake Strike Team report ranked ocean pipelines among the least feasible lake solutions. What Utah learned at the cost of a detailed study applies equally to similar proposals elsewhere. The gap between conceptual discussions and practical reality often spans tens of billions of dollars and decades of construction that may never happen. While ocean pipelines remain speculative, Nevada invested billions in infrastructure that genuinely exists and functions. This work represents real engineering achievements addressing real water challenges. Lake Mead intake. Number three reached completion in 2015, extending down to 860 feet elevation. Building it required tunneling through volcanic rock beneath the reservoir, creating an intake that would remain functional even if lake levels dropped severely. The low lake level pumping station represented a $1.5 billion investment ensuring water access at 875 feet elevation. Deadpool sits at 895 feet, where no water flows through Hoover Dam by gravity alone, making that 20-foot buffer critically important. The Horizon Lateral Program addresses local distribution infrastructure with an estimated cost between $2 and $2.7 billion, and construction should begin in 2027. Groundwater banking created another layer of security, with over 360,000 acre-feet of water accumulated in underground storage. During years when surface supply exceeded demand, the Southern Nevada Water Authority injected water into the Las Vegas Valley aquifers. That stored water represents approximately eight years of demand available during emergencies. None of these investments capture headlines the way a massive ocean pipeline would. They've genuinely strengthened Nevada's water resilience in measurable ways. The ocean pipeline debate reflects something bigger happening across the American West. Building bigger meant the answer to every water problem for much of the 20th century, whether that meant more dams, longer canals, or larger reservoirs. The Hoover Dam itself stands as a monument to that thinking. Experts increasingly suggest that era may be ending. Michael Cohen of the Pacific Institute stated that the era of big dams and big projects is dead. Thinking throughout the West has shifted in terms of water conservation, living within people's means, and the idea of limits. Nevada's 55% reduction in per capita water use, while adding over 800,000 residents, demonstrates what conservation can achieve when people commit to it. The Southern Nevada Water Authority's water exchange model shows creative agreements accomplishing more than brute force infrastructure ever could. Mega projects haven't been ruled out forever. They face a much higher bar of scrutiny than they once did, and alternatives that seemed insufficient a generation ago have proven more capable than expected. Nevada's water future looks quite different from headlines suggesting active pipeline construction when you examine the verified facts. Lake Mead remains at roughly 33% capacity, and the structural deficit in the Colorado River system persists. Climate change will likely worsen conditions over coming decades, and Nevada cannot escape these realities through conservation alone. The Southern Nevada Water Authority included ocean desalination in their long-term planning documents, but on a 30- to 40-year horizon through water exchange mechanisms rather than direct pipelines. Investment in California's Pure Water Project represents the actual template for how ocean water might eventually factor into Nevada's supply. Financial partnerships shift water rights on paper, while the water itself stays where producing it makes practical sense. The $16 billion Little Pacific Project remains unconfirmed speculation without official backing, committed funding, or construction timelines. Similar proposals studied seriously in Utah proved economically and practically infeasible. What's verified? A genuine water crisis, serious conservation efforts, billions of dollars in existing infrastructure investments, and ongoing exploration of long-term solutions, including potential desalination partnerships. 
Nevada's relationship with Pacific Ocean water isn't really about a pipeline. A region confronting the limits of its water supply is searching for solutions ranging from practical to improbable. Conservation and water exchanges and targeted infrastructure work better than many expected. Massive ocean pipelines crossing mountain ranges continue capturing imaginations without capturing funding or approvals. The crisis remains absolutely real. The solutions that will actually matter may be far less dramatic than the ones making headlines. Using less water and making smarter deals sometimes accomplishes what no mega project ever could. If this breakdown of fact versus fiction helped you understand what's actually happening with Western water, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. We dig into these kinds of stories every week, separating what's really happening from what just sounds good on the internet. Drop a comment letting us know what infrastructure mystery you'd like us to investigate next.